Today we're going to talk about the Big Tree Tech version of the Ramps 1.6 board. I'm going to explain what's around the board for you here and then go into the software and explain in depth what else we have to work with. So these female sets of pins over here, these are for our X stepper, our Y stepper, and our Z stepper. Then we have our E0 for our first extruder and then E1 for our second extruder. In front of each one of these ports, we have four sets of pins. These are for our NEMA stepper motors. As you can see, the Z axis has two sets of four pins. Then we have our power pins over here. So we have a VCC, a five volt, and I believe that's ground. Over here, we have our end stop pins. So we have our X minimum, our X maximum, our Y minimum, our Y maximum, our Z minimum, and our Z maximum. These four pins over here are called our I2C pins. Then we have our thermistor pins right here for three sets of thermistors. These are used to tell temperature. And over here we have our auxiliary four set of pins. This sometimes is used for um, multiple different things, but mostly it's used for an LCD of some type. Then we have auxiliary three, and inside auxiliary three we have our I2C, or excuse me, not our I2C, our spy pins. And what those are are serial peripheral interface pins. That's why we pronounce it spy. And what they do is they actually will connect the spy section for the software to communicate over and then we'll have a pin someplace else on the board that will actually connect to the device as an address. Over here we have our auxiliary two set of pins, our auxiliary one set of pins, and then finally we have our pins over here where we have three sets of four that are used for four different types of servos, but we can use this for other things such as driving fans, which I'll probably get into in later tutorials. Over here we have a reset button, and then below this little heat sink are four things that are actually being wicked away for heat, and those are our, uh, our MOSFETs. Over here we have our main power. You can do either 12 or up to 35 volts. We have our bed set of pins, which we can possibly use for other things. Then we have a fan set of pins right here. And then on D10, this is usually used for our first extruder. So in order to connect this, we're gonna start with an 8-bit processor. So I'm gonna slide this in. This is the Mega or AT Mega 2560 chipset. It's an 8 bit processor, as you can see right here. It's got a normal USB connection and it can take external power, but we'll probably never use this. Over here, we have our female set of pins to connect the board to. So, this gives us both digital and analog pins around the board to use with our Ramps 1.6. So I'm going to flip this over so you can actually see underneath how it's going to connect. So I'm going to take these off. And underneath here, as you can see on the ramps, we have pins that will mate with the pins on the board up above. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So you're going to take the board and you're going to rotate it over match up the sets of pins that you have and then you're going to apply a little bit of thumb pressure in order to bring it down without damaging your pins so this might take a little work And there you go. As you can see, it's already connected. So I'm going to show you how to actually set up the actual firmware for your initial load. 
And so I'm going to swap over to my computer for a moment to give you a little bit more color as to what I'm working on. Okay, to start with, your Ramps 1.6, in this case, will run on the Marlin firmware. In order to actually use it, we have to load Arduino. So in order to load Arduino, we have to basically pull down the IDE, which is the Integrated Developer Environment. So I'm going to do a search on IDE. It brings us to the website. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to scroll down, and what we have here is our Arduino 1.8.110. And I'm going to go over to here where it says Install for Windows XP and Up. This will install our drivers and the development environment that we need to run this board. So we're on the contribution page. I strongly suggest making a contribution because they actually give you a development environment to work with. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna download. So this may take a moment to pull down but uh, hopefully it'll be pretty quick. And there we have it. So in order to open this, I'm going to go over here and do a show in folder. And I'm going to click on this to install. So I'm gonna double click. It may populate a Dialogue that you're unable to see, but that's fine. I'll just read it out. It's basically saying, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? So I'm going to answer yes. Now it's going to ask me if I agree to the terms of service. I'm going to agree. I'm going to basically install everything, even the USB driver, so that we can communicate with the device that we're working with, being the Mega AT Mega 2560 chipset. And now I'm going to install. So right now what it's doing is basically extracting the files. We can look in detail over here, but it's moving kind of quick due to the computer I'm working with. But uh, I'm sure it'll be about the same pace on your computer, maybe even faster. Okay, now that it's complete, I'm going to click close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the web browser. And I'm going to do a search on Marlin Firmware and press enter. And this brings you to the Marlin Firmware homepage. In here, I'm going to click on the download option. And what we're going to do is normally I would do it with an older version up here. But because Marlin is moving in the direction of its newest software release that now is in an alpha type mode, I'm gonna make you from more familiar with this particular version. So I'm gonna download the bug fix zip file. Then I'm gonna go to the actual folder that contains it. So I'm gonna show in folder. And we're gonna have to wait for it to open again. There we go. I'm gonna right click or actually, what I'm going to do is just to open it so you can see a different way to do this. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to press Control C to copy. I'm then going to go to my C drive. And I'm going to go to the folder for ramps 1.6. I'm going to go to the tutorials folder, the basics folder that I'm showing you. Open up the firmware folder and paste it right here. This might take a moment to copy over because it's basically unzipping at the same time that it's copying. And after this completes, I'll show you actually how to open the application within this folder, but I'll also show you a walk around of what's contained therein. Some of the things that might be of interest are the pins file, which will uh, explain how the pins are allocated on the board for the ramps 
1.6. It may not show up as a ramps 1.6. It might be a ramps 1.4, but that's okay. So let's see what happens because this is the most modern download that we just did this moment. So I'm going to open the folder. Inside here to open it, you're going to go to Marlin. Inside Marlin, there's an INO file. This is marlin.ino if you have your extensions not hidden like myself. I'm going to double click to actually open it. And this will open up the application in order to set up our integrated developer environment. So first I'm going to show you this tab. It's configuration.h. This allows us to do 90% of our configurations in here. Then we have our configuration underscore ADV. This is our advanced configuration file. So we'll be doing some configurations in this in the future. And then the other tabs are just ones that they've included that we can see. But for now, we're going to ignore that. And I'm going to go back to the folder and expand it out here. So we have a source folder. We're going to go into that for a second. And inside the source folder, we have a core folder. Inside here, we have a boards.h file. We're going to open that up. And inside here, I want to do a search on ramps. And we'll say underscore one. Let's see if there's a one six. Currently, there is not, which is OK because we do have the 1.4 right here that we could probably use. So we're going to stick with that for the moment. And in the future, if they have a broken out one that we can use for it, we'll do that. But for now, we'll actually just learn from here and then learn what we can do with it later. So in this case, the default is always going to be EFB, which stands for extruder fan bed. But there are other configurations that you can use on the same board being extruder, extruder bed, extruder fan, fan, and then you have extruder, extruder fan, and then you have SF. And SF, I believe, is for spindle control. So that would allow you to control a actual carving device. And then you can also hook a fan to it. So we're going to close out of here for now because we don't need this at the moment. And now I'm going to show you the pins folder. So I'm going to go up to source and we're going to go to the pins folder. And inside the pins folder, we have a ramps folder. So we're going to open that up. And we have several different board types. But the one that we're looking for is ramps 1 4. So we're going to have to look around here a little bit. Apparently, we're not seeing it right away, which is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the ramps one underscore three. Just so you can see what's going on. So inside here. We have basically the definition of the board. And this is only used for the ramps one dot three. So this is probably old. But it's making reference to a different board being ramps.h. So we know we're in the wrong actual file for this because this board is probably out of date now. So we're going to close this and we're going to go to this one, which is for the ramps 1.4 and above. So as you can see, there's going to be pin assignments down here. So these pin assignments, for instance, these are our servo pins. So what we can do is we can match these up to our pins diagram. And I'll show you how to find that real quick. We're going to go to our browser. We're going to open another tab. And we're going to type ramps 1.6. And as you can see, there is a reprap 1.6. So we're going to go to this wiki. And inside here, they show the board. And then they show the pins. So for instance, we were looking at the pins for the actual servos down here. So I'm going to enlarge this. And as you can see, we've got our four sets of pins. Obviously, the ground is here. Five volts is here. Then it's 11, 6, 5, and 4. So let's go back to the pins file for a second. And as you can see, it's defined as 11, 
6, 5, and 4. So now you know where your pins are and how they're actually tied to your board. And this is true of everything around your board. So don't get overwhelmed. Not a big deal. It's actually pretty nice to actually know what's going on. And then there's different pins down here for your steppers. And I'll teach you a little bit, a bit about this in the future. And then you have other pins, obviously, that you can research on your own. So I'm going to close out of this for the moment. Now I'm going to go over to the Marlin Integrated Development Environment. And I'm going to do a search on motherboard on the configuration.h tab. So I'm going to do motherboard. And down here is where you define your motherboard. In this case, it's already defined by default for this board. So we're good there. So on other boards, you may have to define your port depending upon what you're working with. But in this case, we're gonna leave it as zero because I believe the software will see it because it's installed the actual um, firmware or excuse me, uh, driver software. So I'm gonna show you something on camera real quick and how we're gonna connect it so we can actually see it before we do anything else. Okay, in order to actually program this, we need to connect our USB connections. So we have the big side over here that I'll connect to the USB port here. Then I'm gonna connect the other side to the computer. And I need to tell you something about this real quick. No one is actually paying me to do this tutorial or financing me in any other way I bought all the materials with my own money but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description so you can help me out by offsetting my costs and it will also make it easier for you to find the hardware that we're talking about Okay, we're back in Marlin. In order to actually set this up, we have to go to Tools. Then we have to go to the actual board type. And right now, it's set to the default that it's loaded at. So we're going to have to find the Mega 2560, which is right here. This is our chipset. Next, we have to make sure that we have a port selected. So we're going to go over here. And sure enough, after we plugged in the USB, it shows up. So we're going to click on that. And then in order to load, there's two different ways to do it. But the easiest way is not to use the verify, which is basically compile. We're going to use the upload, which will compile and then will upload to the board. This will happen automatically for you if you're connected. So here we go. Okay, as you can see, the upload completed. There appears to be no errors. So now we need to test the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the web browser again, and I'm gonna type in counterface.com and press enter. And we're gonna go to download. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to download the most current version, which isn't very current, but it's helpful to use. So we're going to go over to the binaries. We're going to find for Windows, which is probably a zip, the most current version, which is right here. And this will take a moment to download. It's not that big, only about 24.1 megabytes. Okay, now that it's done downloading, I'm gonna go to show in folder and I'm going to extract it into this folder so you can see what's going on. Normally you do this to your desktop just so you can find it and then maybe put it in your taskbar. But for now, I'm gonna show you the print run. So I'm gonna open this up. Inside here we have an executable. So we're going to double click on it for Proner Face. We're going to connect to the device. Now, as you can see, it shows everything about the device that's possible without actual more than 5 volt power being 
supplied. But we're going to look to see what the end stops look like. We're going to type M119 and press enter. And as you can see, they all say triggered. That's because nothing is connected. But uh, I'll show you how to do that in future tutorials. But uh, if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.